Today's episode is sponsored by our good friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, located in Melbourne, Florida. Now check out their Facebook online auctions for back issues and action figures, shipping nationwide. And then there's EGS Expert Grading Services, the Gen X place to get your comics graded and in case. The only place to get custom, unique labels on your treasured comics, shipping nationwide. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New to Vero 2. Hi, I'm your presenter, Shibu RU. Well, obviously I'm going with the J look here after my recent trip up north to visit my family in Philadelphia. Actually, my regulars know that Philly is my hometown. So I usually try to wait when the weather is warmer though, but my brother got engaged, so that was a good reason to head on up north. And while I was up north, like the title says, I got to visit um, the Secret Stash, the famous comic store from Comic Book Men. And if you don't know, it actually relocated from its uh, location during the filming of that. But before I dive in, because I'm going to share what I got, and I'm actually kind of surprised what I was able to pick out from uh, the Secret Stash, as well as uh, just books I picked up during this trip to showcase to you guys. Let's start off with something huge that maybe some Gen Xers may not know about. And that is, ever since the Super Bowl, this has been the hottest book out there. This is the first appearance of the Illuminati. And if we watched the Doctor Strange trailer, people have, could swear that they heard Patrick Stewart's voice in the background. And all of those uh, Iron Man security guy-like things escorting uh, Doctor Strange, like he's appearing before some type of court, that is a reference to the uh, side group called the Illuminati. Ironically, the funny thing is, I picked out this book way back in 2005. Um, just, I hadn't been doing reading comics regularly, and I moved to Florida, and I guess what's the best thing to do when you're new to some place? Hey, comics kills times. So I happened to buy um, this New Avengers, of course, Spider-Woman. <laughs> That's the only reason why I bought it is because of Spider-Woman. You know, I'm like, ooh, look at that. So look at that. Many years later, I it turned out that I bought, uh, I bought also issue number eight. Um, but that segues into what I'm going to share with you with my um, pickups during this trip. And I targeted mostly two places. I, um, Heroes, which is located in Burlington, New Jersey. And if you follow Mint, uh, Hunt, Mint Hunter Comics, he's from that area. So I tried to talk to him and maybe in the future we could do something together. But he's a really up and coming popular uh, comic YouTuber. Uh, very knowledgeable, really nice guy. And I hope we could do something uh, together when I go back and visit my parents. But so I visited Heroes Comic Shop as well as the Secret Stash. And I've been looking at um, that new Avengers run back in 05 and 06. Now, here's the thing. Um, again, the this one I picked up at Heroes. Again, wonderful Spider-Woman cover. I mean, that is just fantastic. <laughs> I love Spider-Woman. I think, you know... That's the cool thing about her is that, you know, she's fully clothed, but she looks really good. So this is a great issue. And this is issue number four. And while this one is issue number 32, the new, the point is this, is like, it seems like there's a lot of elements that the MCU is pulling from this uh, John Michael Bendis run of the new Avengers as well as young Avengers as well so this guy particularly um, has is having a big impact on what is currently going on in the future of the MCU so that's why I've been targeting these new Avengers issues this is issue number 33 another cool creepy cover and another one from the Secret Stash, issue number 41, which is a huge issue, I think. It's another key issue where it talks about uh, the secret invasion. 
So if we saw at the end of WandaVision where the uh, uh, scroll revealed herself as one of the agents, so we all know that um, uh, Nick Fury has been off world, you know, in that um, sword satellite base, I guess. And what is Nick Fury, who we saw at the end of Endgame, ironically, that's not really Nick Fury. That's this guy pretending to be Nick Fury. Fury as we saw. So again, these are issues. I think there's another one here. So, oh, yeah, this is a great one. This is issue number 15. Another great Spider-Woman cover. Again, from the Secret Stash. And I met uh, Mike. Uh, if Mike was the one, if you watch Comic Book Men, he was the one that seems to be the go-to guy when everybody else had a question or a bizarre thing. Mike knew his shit. So he was working that particular day, and I think there's a lady there working now. Um, I didn't see all the other, uh, I think, uh, what's his name? The, the little Asian guy. He wasn't there, and I heard he's since quit. I mean, he's doing it. I mean, he still hangs around, but he's just doing podcasting and going to comic book conventions. But again, a uh, top tip is definitely, if you could, go into any back bin in an LCS and start picking out um, this run. This is, seems to be, you know, just a little tip. I have a little feeling. And so far, you know, we're batting pretty good, solid with these pickups. So New Avengers is definitely a uh, thing you should be keeping an eye on. And it's fun, whatever, you know, that's the best part. All right, so the next book, uh, again, at uh, we're still sticking with... The Secret Stash, in honor of our good friend, comic book men, um, not comic book men, comic troves, Chris Pierce, and his amazing job covering the iconic, the legendary George Perez. And for those that don't know, sadly, George Perez is on the last stages of life. He has terminal illness. And a recent CGC sign was taking place. Unfortunately, that had to be canceled due to his health. Um, I always talk about Larry Hama, Larry Hama, Larry Hama, George Perez is right there. These eight, late seventies, eighties guys, early nineties that weren't, you know, they didn't benefit from the Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, rock star type towards creators. These guys should have been on that. And I think that's one of the biggest sins when I see modern comic people, put McFarlane and Lee and Liefeld up on some pedestal and they forget about guys like John Byrne, um, George Perez, and Larry Hama. Those guys were our rock stars, you know. And to, up until, you know, known for his colorful shirts. And again, watch Chris Pierce's uh, tribute to George Perez on Comic Tropes. It's, it's amazing. Very well done. Um, so... The Secret Stash had Wonder Woman number one when they kind of rebooted the entire DC universe after uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth, the epic saga ended. So this is one of the ones that George Perez actually um, kind of like targeted in and he really did justice to uh, Diana Prince and reviving this iconic character. And with the price that I got it for, I mean, it's just, again, this is just my way of saying Thank you, Mr. Perez, for all the wonderful years and all the entertainment you provided for this generation. You are loved, and when you do pass the rainbow, um, I'm sure there's, you know, streams and rainbows where you're going because you've done nothing but give this world uh, a joy. And I think that should be taken account for in any, any person when you're on the Day of Judgment your souls are being waved. Someone that did so good, brought so much happiness to so many people, definitely deserves a spot in the good side. Alrighty. So with that aside, we're going to do um, the next issue. Again, it's all secret stash. I got the issue number one. Now, basically, if you guys recall, two, three years ago, I did the yearbook, uh, G.I. Joe yearbook. And there was a story about a continuation after G.I. Joe the movie. Well, this one's being continuing after the G.I. Joe the Sunbow series. Um, so it's going to be interesting. I've read most of it. We're going to do a recap of this later in the month 
as you guys, my regulars know, I wait a month because I don't want to affect sales. Um, I don't want. I know the people that work hard in IDW and presenting us these wonderful things. And again, I, I, the best way to support is wait. You know, I know some people do it the day before. But that's taking away sales. That's taking away people's livelihood. So um, I do it, and I hope encourage you to buy these issues even before you watch. So um, so we could go through it together. Maybe you come up with the same assumptions that I did when I recap. So that's what makes it fun for me. I like to hear from guys and gals that are reading the uh, issues when I do these recaps. So that makes it more fun. But again, this has been a home run. So I mean, I'm almost done and I can't wait to recap it. So if you have it, make sure you put this on your pull list. Even if you're not a G.I. Joe fan, if you're an 80s fan, if you love all that stuff, this, and I even called this out when I did the recap for issue number 286. I think it was a uh, special missions with a uh, snow job on it. And I said the artwork looks so much like a Sunbow cartoon. Well, lo and behold, that artist is working on this series. So keep a lookout for that. All right, the next book we're gonna feature, uh, again, this is at the Secret Stash, is G.I. Joe issue number nine. Now, a lot of my regulars know I'm pretty much done with the Marvel run, but every now and then there is an issue that I am missing or I want to upgrade. Case in point, this iconic Scarlet cover. I mean, this is a beautiful new stand edition of this wonderful issue. Issue number nine, again, um, issue, everyone focuses on issue number one and 21, but those early Joes, if you've seen the background, I love the artwork, you know, Herb Trimpey, um, so many other artists that in those early G.I. Joe uh, run issues, it's like beauty. It's just so beautiful. And this one of Scarlet is iconic. And I think HCC uh, picked this issue when he did was doing a recap. Uh, and again, while other books, other G.I. Joe issues may get all like, you know, issue 21, 63, you know, so many. This cover sometimes gets overlooked. And... For anyone that's a true Scarlet fan, they're definitely like this one. So I'm really glad I was able to pick this up for next to nothing. And hey, this is definitely a grading candidate. G.I. Joe issue number nine. All right. So, you know, it's not all about old issues. We got some new shit, too. So um, let's start off with the one I'm not really familiar with, but I heard a lot about, you know, and that is Monkey Prince number one. This is supposedly a new Disney character, um, not Disney, DC character uh, that is creating some buzz and some um, support. Um, I believe he's a Hispanic uh, character. I'm not 100% sure. I don't know much about him. All I know is there's a lot of people been talking about this and, you know, bringing it up. And I just thought, hey, you know, this, this wonderful limited series cover of this character I don't know if he's going to stick or what have you, but supposedly he was introduced a while ago. He made a cameo appearance and then a full appearance. And now this is his first solo series. So this is one of those that you just buy and put away in the long box and save it for a rainy day. But I just wanted to point this out to you in case you were visiting the comic shop and you saw this issue. It may be advantageous to pick this one up and put it away for a rainy day. So... Monkey Prince, I mean, I used to call my brother that, hey, monkey boy, you know, so that's kind of funny, that's the title. All right, the next book, uh, again, if you've been following, we do uh, recaps, um, or, you know, I showcase my pickups for the month, and I'm continuing with the Hulk series by Donny Cates. Everyone knows Donny Cates for his uh, epic uh, Venom run, and now his Thor run, introducing the God of Hammers, Recently, that's created a lot of buzz, a new character, um, and that actually ties into the Thor movie. If there's a god of hammers, there's going to be a god killer. Is that possibly setting up for the Thor movie? I don't know, but anyway, it's worth getting and putting aside. Also, Thor number six. There's a variant, um, I think it's maybe the third or fourth print, but it has a picture of Thanos holding... Mjolnir with all the Infinity Stones. And supposedly, um, that is, I think, Thanos' Thanos's son or brother or something like that. 
but it was a new character. It's not it's not known right at this point. But it's uh, Thanos or some descendant or something of Thanos. But that remains. I, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I know uh, a couple of you guys out there will correct me, and please do in the comments because I'm not really familiar with it. But anyway, um, Hulk number four. So far, Donny Cates in this series, people are kind of having mixed emotions, but. If anything I've learned from modern comic collecting is to stick with Donny Cates because eventually he's going to toss you something that's going to be uh, crazy buck wild to, before it's too late. So again, for me, I have the Thor on my pull as well as Hulk um, crossover. Anything with Donny Cates, he's, uh, he seems to be the guy besides Robert Kirkman in this modern era to um, really capture not just comics but also the big and small screen as well. So uh, again, it just remains to be seen what happens. Uh, so far, the story is kind of confusing to me. I don't get it, but uh, whatever, I'm old. So the next and last modern book we're gonna look at is uh, The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 88. Uh, and there's something called the Beyond um, little, so I guess there's it's like not just the issue, but a little bit more. They usually print out the um, the issue itself, and then they'll have a beyond. And a lot of people skip on the beyond aspect of it. But this is the first appearance of a new character called the Goblin Queen. Again, with comics, there's always new people coming and going. Who the hell knows what sticks? But um, recently, just like what I said with that uh, New Avengers issue number seven, this, despite it being relatively new, is commanding a high price. So a book that's normally $5 or $4, you're seeing it being sold raw, not graded, um, 20 above, 20 plus and above. So that's a, a good return on investment if you're inclined to. But again, I just think it's a cool ass cover. I really don't care about the monetary aspect of it, but I point it out regardless. But the cover is cool, man. I think that's one of the things that drew me to this and I was lucky to get it before you know, it started to take flight and you seeing regular prices, like I said, 15 to 20 bucks for a comic that just came out is absurd, but that's modern comics for you. All right. So the last book we're going to showcase from this epic, wonderful trip is something I've mentioned on my uh, social media groups. Now, it's cool that people are targeting the MCU and that stuff, but I am really targeting these early variant um, Nintendo comics. Now this is the second issue of uh, the Game Boy series. They had a Zelda, they had Super Mario Brothers. Just go to eBay and type in a Super Mario issue number one and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, again, the variant was kind of like um, uh, Jim Shooter, like after he was unceremoniously fired from Marvel. So there's a whole, I mean, again, go to comic tropes. He is the history of it. But again, these Nintendo comic books, I mean, they focused, a uh, variant focused on what? Wrestling and video games, which was kind of weird at the time. But now um, these are difficult to find in good grades because if it was in any kid's hand, they're really ripped to shreds or low grades. So to get a high, um, candidate for grading looking like this this is again issue number two and I, and I always the next best thing guys like that's what I, this channel is kind of about like you don't have to have big box you don't have to have um whatever you know build that's the fun aspect of it get the issue twos get the second appearances get the whatever build slowly and you have more fun in doing it because you're not feeling the strains of any type of financial uh, implications as far as your actions like you know is this gonna hurt me uh, you, when the hobby gets to that I mean, it's not the good hobby for you you know you shouldn't be balancing your, your personal economics with this hobby economics so um, my point is that you could still enjoy it have a shitload of fun you don't need to spend that much money you don't need any of that so getting these like I said the reprint of Star Wars issue number two great example same thing with this with issue number two it's not issue number one but it's under that top three and when you're in that sweet spot um you're, you're not your 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 return on investments 
you know, but your stability and security, knowing that you're not going to get fucked over, so to speak, down the road. So again, I think these are great books. I'm really happy. It was a really fun trip. Too cold for me, though. You know, being a Floridian, um, <laughs> you may may come across as a pussy, but so anything below 70 degrees is tough because your body is just so used to um, dispensing heat. So we're going to do um, on Channel News, since I've been away for a few days, I apologize. We're going to do recap of issue number 288. Um, which is great because it's a Falcon issue, and I loved it to death. And, of course, we're going to look at this G.I. Joe comics continuing from the Sunbow series. And um, it, it, it is worth it, so definitely stay tuned for those. And, hey, thanks for sharing, and thanks for joining me and allowing me to share all of this stuff with you. You know, it's just been fun uh, networking, going back up north, and going to different comic shops. Me, hopefully... Um, mint hunter mint hunter comics and i do something down the road the next time i visit but again this is shibu are you thanks for watching we'll see you next time